Okay, we're live here at the Infinity Festival in Hollywood. I'm Erin Riley, and I'm a professor at University of Texas at Austin and a strategic consultant for Infinity Festival. This is where we're bringing Silicon Valley innovators together with Hollywood storytelling professionals. And I have with us today Charlie Fink, Shelley Peterson, and Ilya Rushkoff. Welcome. Thank you. So why don't we just go down the line? I'll start over here. Uh, Ilya, if you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do and why you're here at Infinity. Absolutely. I'm on the Hollywood side here and my goal is to bring Hollywood storytelling together with the most innovative technology. Our film is here at the festival. It's an immersive first person point of view action film. So the goal there is to drop audience right into the middle of, let's say, Mission Impossible from the eyes of Tom Cruise. Adventure driven in virtual reality. Very nice. Well, we'll have to go over there and check that out on the demos. Um, and Shelley, you are with Lockheed Martin. Yes, I'm Shelley Peterson. I'm with Lockheed Martin. I'm the principal investigator for augmented and mixed reality. And we use augmented reality to build spacecraft. Very nice. And Charlie. Thank you for having me. I am a XR consultant. Uh, I have a popular column in Forbes about XR. And I um, have written two AR-enabled books, Charlie Fink's Metaverse and Convergence, or How the World Will Be Painted with Data, which just came out in March at and, South By. And both of those are in my lab, and students are reading them quite Yay. regularly. <laughs> they like the cartoons. They do, yeah. they do. They like the AR app that goes along with it, too, and see you come to life and pop up yeah, from the Yeah, on the, the book. cover, that was fun. It <laughs> was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I am launching Texas Immersive at the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm trying to engage the next generation to really understand what this world is. So I'd love to talk to all three of you in your own terms, can you define immersive and what does it mean? Storytelling has always evolved and cinema at some point was just on a show like this just 120 years ago. Storytelling is pushed by technology always and immersive is the next big step in it. We've been telling stories as human beings on the 2D surface since cave painting. Mm -hmm. And immersive for the first time in the history of humanity we can tell the stories in the way we perceive the world around us. Mm -hmm. And the language for it is still developing. We are very young as a storytelling medium. Mm -hmm. So it's an exciting time and it's important for students as well because they are going to be the ones who will be driving that change as well. So we step into the middle of story. What, yes. uh, what are the other ways we define immersive? Well, I'll echo what, what you're saying in that you know, in almost all of our prior formats of data, it's 2D data. It may be 3D data on a 2D screen, but it's still 2D data, a rectangle of data. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a screen, a book, um, everything is 2D rectangle. When we can take that information and pop it out into the real world, it changes so many different things. We can uh, change the way that we have to interpret data, which also uh, enables accessing that data much more quickly. Um, which is what we're seeing in building spacecraft. Mm -hmm. It's much more rapid. Mm -hmm. um, I would define XR a little bit broadly, um, and I would look at all technologies that augment man. So I would tell you that an exoskeleton is an XR technology. A hearable is an XR technology. And of course, yep. VR fits into that uh, broad category of XR as well, although each of these let's call them uh, subcategories, uh, can be quite enormous, like VR, which you know, has so many great applications and promises to put you inside the movie, which of course is what Walt Disney was trying to do with Disneyland using the technology of, of the, the 1950s, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But um, the promise of VR to put someone in a movie is very, very powerful. I, I hope your movie does that, not many do. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's the first one. Um, but the applications that are really gaining traction today are for training and simulation. The Oculus Quest is an amazing uh, little game machine. Perhaps it will evolve. I think it will into something much, much more than that. But that's certainly where new technology starts. So, you know, from, from games to movie storytelling to learning how to drive a forklift, this technology is insinuating itself into our lives so that we don't even realize that it's technology. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I call it the suitcase. We're in the world of the suitcase of acronyms. XR, VR, yes, AI, true. IoT. And, you know, I think it'll, be, it'll show a true maturity of the industry when no one uses those words anymore. I know, right? right? Mm-hmm. And that's why I love, I, I feel like those are all the emerging technologies that we afford immersive. But immersive is either stepping into a world or, like you said, the data in our world we can step into in a new mm-hmm. way and see it in a different mm-hmm. way, new layers. Um, uh, do you find that the relationship between the stories, whether they're nonfiction or fiction, um, have a different relationship with the audience? And if so, how? Uh, it's, it's a whole different language. There are, if you take a VR camera and shoot a regular movie about it, on, on it, it doesn't become a virtual reality experience. It's a whole new storytelling language. If you look at early works in the world of cinema, of George Melies, for example, Mm. they were very theatrical, very theater-inspired, and it took decades to develop... The cut. Yeah, to develop (laughs) the the cut cut and the cinematic sound, the cinematic... Parallel action. Uh Now we don't have cuts. (laughs) Exactly. In VR, for example, in Agent Emerson, it's all is a continuous shot. It appears to be one continuous shot because it's normal for virtual reality to suddenly appear in another place and and then back right. on your place. See, right. the next step, of course, is for uh, the world in which you enter the movie to be dimensional and pliable so that you could sort of run around inside mm-hmm. of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. exactly. You know, committing crimes. Yeah. And, and, you know, the kind of movie Ilya is talking about is essentially a hallway. Mm-hmm. So you can't turn around and go back or do something different. You're, you know, essentially trapped in the body of Agent Emerson. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, um, I used to teach editing and would use Hitchcock's The Rope, Mm -hmm. you know, where you never felt like there was a cut and it was the beginning of the Emerson. There are like eight or ten cuts in that movie, but they're invisible. They're invisible Mm -hmm. and I think that's what uh, now when you're in a world, it's invisible to shaping it like you're in an environment. Every time he occluded the camera... (laughs) <laughs> you know, he, he, he mm-hmm. cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what about from a Lockheed Martin's perspective? Um, how is the audience and story changing with how you're creating new workforce training? So with what we're seeing with training, we, we use the terms training and, and ramp up because when we're building spacecraft, we have uh, technicians and teams who have many years of experience, but it may be the first time that they've built that structure. So we're seeing eight hours of what would normally take as a ramp up cut down to about 45 minutes um, because it's so intuitive. They can play through and see visually what they're about to accomplish. And it's just so much more rapid than um, reading from a document or a drawing or text work instruction. And is most of the training done in virtual reality or are you moving into using AR headsets out in the field while you're working on on building these It's missions? primarily AR because they can okay. see in their environment with it overlaid in their structure. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's quite amazing to see how rapidly that takes place and um, we can even use some activities that we're referencing as um, training free activities. The data is so rich that you don't have to train first. They can just um, go ahead and start working without having to go through the ramp up. Mm -hmm. And Charlie, you've studied this area in regards to thinking about workforce training in in AR, VR. Right. One of the big topics right now is what they call knowledge capture, Mm -hmm. right? Baby boomers are retiring. Typically, the way someone is trained uh, for a technical task is that they stand next to an experienced employee who, who walks them through it and observes, and I- it's a laborious process, and it requires both a trainer mm-hmm. and the trainee to be fully present. It's not very efficient. It's not terribly right. scalable. But with knowledge capture, for example, wearing a Magic Leap or a HoloLens spatial computer allows the expert to walk through every task of the first person labeling things and anchoring those labels as they go along so that the trainee then puts on that headset and follows along the exact steps, seeing what's been highlighted and even being able to reference um, embedded videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that is rapidly being adopted by a lot of large enterprises. Um, You see it it being used a lot um, in chemical processes that are multi-step 
processes. Mm -hmm. So this, and, and you know, there've been many studies that have validated this idea that that kind of immersive training is sometimes even more effective than having a human trainer there because experiencing what you're learning, mm -hmm, right. you know, focuses the mind and creates a memory that is much more powerful than traditional rote learning. Right. So immersive is changing the way we think about cognition, and it's the it's also I assume changing the way we think about emotion mm -hmm. in storytelling. Did you see that with uh, with audiences that have participated in your film? Do they come out having a, a different experience than if they had just watched it on a two D film? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, virtual reality is not only a storytelling experience; it's also a physical experience because you are in this world, mm -hmm. and because it's a spy adventure, you get to go through sword mm -hmm. battles or or Demi with a Parachute. <laughs> also, as a medium, it's way more intimate than film, which was surprising to me. When we were working with our actors, Tony Dennison from The Close and Lindsay Fonseca from Kick As, they really grasped on that. And there is a scene where the actress is inches away from your face, looking you directly in the eyes. Mm -hmm. And this is incredibly impactful. And out of all the funs and things and Agent Emerson, that's my favorite moment. She looks directly in your eyes, you feel that she's in a personal space and mm. you want to either protect her or run away from her, that depends on what parts of the movie you are focusing on. Breaking down the fourth wall, both with <laughs> training and with storytelling. Um, so uh, just thinking about the next generation, the students that I'm teaching, if you could give some advice on the hard skills and soft skills that I should make sure to be incorporating in my courses, what would they be? Curiosity is the uh, one, and <laughs> because uh, it's a new world, and technology can be invented to make an idea happen. Again, with Agent Emerson, when we started, the technology just simply not exist. Mm -hmm. So we sat down with engineers and made it happen. And that's, I think, the key for the students. You can make happen anything in 21st century. Technology is incredible. Mm -hmm. The ideas is what driving everything forward, and that's comes from curiosity. Uh, Ilya, I love that you said that because I <laughs> always end my class with stay curious, which is so good. And how about it's you? It's like curiosity, the, the, the rover. Um, curiosity and passion and, um, you know, with spacecraft, we have dreamers who dream and then they bring that to real life. They uh, bring their dreams to reality and uh, the lifelong learning aspect is very important in this industry as it changes and evolves and emerges into something new and different over the next however many years. Mm -hmm. That will be a uh, key in being willing to learn continuously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charlie? Well, the opportunities in, in immersive media are uh, multiplying <laughs> and they are vast and probably it is the fastest growing facet of the media industry. To break in, however, you do need technical skills that you didn't need to have before. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find a job working for somebody like Ilya on a groundbreaking VR movie, you need to know Unity. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to have like just sort of the basic, you need to know Unity, you need to know 3D, mm -hmm. you need to know, you know, um, you know how, to, how to build an app. I mean, these are all skills that are kind of expected. Yes. that you would mm -hmm. have. Yeah. And if you don't, you're going to become like me and get stuck in marketing roles. <laughs> and those are always the first people to be canned because <laughs> they're not really making anything. <laughs> they're just talking about stuff. So, which which is a very, very valuable you skill, You always I have need to, say. to know people who <laughs> can actually <laughs> handle a contract and negotiate. <laughs> I think they're both very important, but I, I hear you. I do believe that our colleges today need to be more digital and we need to have at least the basic skills of being digital whether it's Unity or Unreal and clearly Adobe yeah, by high school. The, speak, you have <laughs> right. to speak the language. Speak the, the language. the lingua franca exactly. of our, our new world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, we're here at the Infinity Festival Live. I'm here with Charlie and Chelly and Ilya. Thank you all so much for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thanks.